Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is David and in this video I will show you how to play the game Lost Cities Roll and Write. A straightforward roll and write, so you might be familiar with some of the mechanics. And if you're also familiar with Lost Cities, and that's my favorite two-player game, you will play this game right away. So please let me show you how it's played. In the box we'll find the score pad, the dice and of course the rule book. At least in the Dutch version there's no pencil or pen added, so you'll have to find one your own. But everyone will get one score sheet, one player will be the active player for the first turn and after that we go clockwise, then the next player will be the active player and so on. And the active player will simply roll all of the dice and pick one combination of both a color and a number. So let's say for this example number two green. And the remaining dice will be for the other players to pick from to make their own combination. And all other players can take the same combination if they want. So a 7 or a 6 in orange or in red. But for me I can take the 2 green. That means I can put a number 2 in the green expedition. Normal Lost Cities has 5 expeditions. In this case we have 6. And if you have troubles with colors you can also recognize them by the symbols. So in this case I would write down number 2 on the bottom of my expedition. From now on the next number I will write down here has to be equal or higher than the number before. So I can put another 2 over here or a higher number. But as you will understand the lower you keep the number for as long as possible the more options you will have to complete your expedition or at least get in the bonus points. Because at the end of the game you will score minus points if you didn't get past the first three boxes. And so you can start six expeditions if you want. If you don't start an expedition at all, you will score zero points at the end of the game. But at least you will not score the negative points. So then it's the next player's turn. That player will take the zero and maybe the blue one. So that leaves for all other players and me a number one red or number 5 red or the green. So let's take the number 1 of course. I cannot take green anymore because the next number needs to be equal or higher. So number 1 green not possible for me anymore. So I'll take the 1 red and I'll check off number 1 over here. And now we also started the second expedition. You're also allowed to not take any dice say there are two number eights and we don't want that as our first number of course then we say i pass i don't want any dice but then we have to cross off one of the dice symbols over here starting also going from bottom to the top now i will score minus 40 points at the end of the game but also on this track the points will be better the higher you get although in this case you don't want to cross off the top symbol because that will score you 0 points and if you finish the game 1 below you will score 70 points. Then there are these arrows, acceleration marks. If I can score the number 2 in green again, for example, could be a 3 or a 4 but I'll take the number 2. Whenever you check off an arrow you can fill in another field for free. You can pick any expedition you want and you can pick any number you want. So in this case Let's continue on the red track and add a number 1 again. If this one also had an arrow, we could fill in another space for free. But that is what these arrows do. And then there are these artifacts. Whenever you pass or cross over an artifact, you can also cross one over, check one over here. And also this will score you more points the higher you get in this column. But there are also these circles on the bottom of the expedition and they will give you the chance to make a bet like in the normal Lost Cities and you can double the score you get at the end of the game. However, should you finish with negative points, also the negative points will be doubled. And you can only check this box if you have not yet started the expedition. So for green, I am not allowed to take the bet. But if I want to gamble on yellow, then I first need to have the choice to get a zero on the dice and a yellow. And now before starting yellow I can check this box. So knowing at the end of the game I will double the points, either positive or negative, at the end of the game. 
your expeditions always have to start with the number one. The number zero is only for the bottom row. Although when you're going to the top, you can use the zero also as it is at 10. Once you completely filled up an expedition, a column, so you checked all nine of the boxes, should you be able to fill another space, but you can't because you're at the top, but it's still the same number or higher than the highest number on top, you can check off this artifact at the top of each column also to score you an artifact in your artifact column. Is your artifact column full and you score another artifact, then that one gets lost. And so when does the game end? The game ends when all six colored bridges are passed, but in total. So maybe I cross three bridges and another player cross two and another player cross one. Those bridges are special. The first player to score the seventh box of his expedition in that color. So say my red is going very well, two, three, four, five. Now I will mention to the other players that I have crossed the red bridge. If I'm the first person to cross this red bridge, I can put a circle around the number 20 and this will score me 20 points at the end of the game. So it's a bonus for being the first player to go from number six to number seven on this column. And if multiple players achieve this in the same round, all those players score the 20 points. All other players have to cross off the 20 and cannot score it anymore. So maybe with the orange, another player says, hey, I've passed the orange bridge, then I have to cross it down. And I will not score the 20 points should I later in the game also pass this field. So once all bridges are passed in the entire game, the game will end after that turn. And you're gonna calculate your score. You will score your columns simply by the points you've collected. Those are listed on the left side. Don't forget to keep in mind your multiplier should you activate it. You will score points based on how many artifacts you have crossed off. And also over here there are two bridges, so 20 points extra to score to be the first player to go to field number 7. So the higher you get, the more points you will get. And also the pass symbol, the dice tokens, you will calculate your score. If you had to pass so many times you've crossed off all of your dice symbols, you will score zero points for this column. But try to do it more than three times in order to score bonus points. And finally, you will score all the points from the bridges you've crossed, should you have any. And then those points together will determine your final score. And if there is a tie between the winners, those players share the victory. And that's it, and that's all for Lost Cities Roll and Write. Pretty straightforward, one player will roll the die and pick one selection. The other dice are left for the other players to pick from. And just like in Lost Cities, you will try to work your way up with every expedition going from the lowest possible number, number one, up to the highest number. And just like in Lost Cities, you will try to work your way up on the expeditions. When you start them, they will be worth negative points, but the farther you get, the more points they will be worth. And each number you write down has to be equal or higher than the previous number on that track. And you can score some extra movements by the arrows and you try to score artifacts also to give you extra points at the end of the game. So that's it. And if you have any questions about Lost Cities Roll and Write, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. My name is David. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.